I'm Ashton Addison from BlockQuest Capital for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Dr. Mo Dong, co founder of Seller Network. Mo, welcome to the show and thank you for taking the time. Thank you, Ashton, for inviting me here. Uh, it's great to be here and talking about uh, what we have been building. Likewise, let's dive straight into it. Let's kick off our conversation with some of the main solutions that Seller Network is working on in, in, in cross-chain security and, and everything you're working on. And then we'll dive into those details after. Sounds good. Well, from a high level, uh, you know, Seller Network is trying to solve the most important problem in uh, the blockchain space right now. Uh, so if you look at in the 2021 and 2022, uh, this last two years, uh, really, like, uh, you know, we have seen a huge number of new blockchains popping up. It's just almost uh, as if like, uh, you know, we're seeing this kind of a great age of discovery, right? So you start with like a Ethereum as a first blockchain, and then you start to migrate into different layer twos, and then you start migrating to different uh, Avalanche, Polygon, all these other different amazing blockchains ecosystems start to pop up and applications start to build on top of that. But the biggest problem right now faced by the entire blockchain ecosystem is that if you look at all these blockchains, they're like isolated islands on a big sea, right? So they're not connected. They're, they're just kind of completely breaking apart a continents that is running on their own. And uh, this is also how the applications are building themselves today, mm -hmm. which is uh, essentially, you know, if I'm a kind of a cross-chain application, uh, I will have to kind of replicate it myself across multiple different chains. Uh, you know, uh, essentially for the same exact functionality and same exact liquidity. So like for Sushi, for example, you have uh, the same USDT, USDC liquidity pool on maybe 10 different blockchains. Um, so that is like very, very inefficient. And from a user's perspective, this also causes a lot of user friction, right? So like user need to manually switch between different blockchains uh, to, okay, you know, I'm, I'm right now on this chain, but I want to swap to an asset on a different chain. I need to kind of manually uh, switch to a different blockchain and bridge the assets there and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. what we're looking uh, uh, at or what we are working on is to really kind of build the bridges and build the communication routes between all these different isolated con uh, continents and isolated islands to connect them all together, right? So like the first step is of course, like build the roads uh, so that like uh, uh, users will be able to uh, bring their fund to kind of bridge into uh, different uh, uh, continents or different blockchain ecosystem. This is where the asset bridge piece comes in, which is uh, what we call a C bridge as the first product of building on top of this general uh, communication layer. Uh, Seabridge uh, to date has processed more than uh, $5.2 uh, $5 billion transaction volume across 27 different chains and uh, for uh, more than uh, 120 different, uh, 120K uh, users, unique users uh, across all the different chains. So that is growing ra very rapidly. But like if we're looking at asset bridge, it's almost like a kind of a, a self drive road. You have to take your car, you know, start from your home and drive to some uh, other foreign states and nations to kind of use the application there. Right. So we don't want to stop there. We also want to build uh, the logistic networks, uh, the Amazons on top of the blockchain, where the users doesn't have to kind of, uh, you know, move that their, uh, themselves to a different blockchain, but just can sit on the blockchain that they're familiar with and have connections on, have a lot of the application for, um, you know, and uh, use uh, applications or services in entirely different blockchain, almost as if like you have Amazon delivering that service to you and product to you. Right, so that's where we we also have this kind of a generalized message passing layer to enable and uh, allow developers to build this kind of a truly interchain native application where the user can just like use all the applications on different blockchains and access liquidity there, access state there, all within a simple click um, from where they are originating from. So yeah, that's uh, from a high level where we have been building. Wow, that's a great intro, Mo. Thank you for all of that and you really nailed it on the problems talking about you know having 10 different pools in, on different chains and that application is really not cross-chain it's sort of multi-chain different instances that aren't communicating with each other actually using these bridges that are inefficient costing hundreds of dollars every time you want to move you know in and out of ethereum um so yeah there's a huge problem to solve there and uh, i'm glad that your team is working on that because that's it's something that needs to be done very quickly um, you mentioned there about having developer access to create the applications on a, a cross-chain platform really easily. Are, are there already a lot of applications working with Seller Network? And also, um, is it the growth of it actually starting to grow or are you seeing more developers coming in? 
Yeah, so like you know, we started from the asset bridge aspect of things, and the asset bridge itself is growing tremendously over the last six months. Because mm-hmm. so we see the, uh, you know, the need and the, re- uh, the 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 need for kind of a cross chain application there by just looking at the asset bridge, right? So like we grow about a hundred times in terms of the daily transaction volume, uh, you know, in the last six months, which which is really amazing, and uh, you know for. Uh, for the application built on top of the Seller Interchain Message Framework, we're seeing a tons of like applications start to utilize that framework today, right? So, and uh, these applications that built on top of this framework will really transform how the user experiences interchain applications in the future, right? So, for some some examples, right? So today, if let's say you want to start from chain A and uh, goes to chain B and swap your X token on chain A to Y token on chain B. Mm-hmm. Uh, you really need to have like multiple different steps, maybe like five, seven different steps to actually kind of manually do that transactions. And uh, that will be su- super costly. And you need to find, okay, which DAX do I swap the token on, on the source chain? Which DAX do I swap on the destination chain? Which bridge do I choose to actually kind of, uh, you know, bridge that this asset through, right? So using uh, our kind of uh, con- uh, cross-chain communication platform, uh, application developers is building this new kind of experience where, you know, the user can just have one click, one transaction on the source chain, and their fund will automatically find the best path across all the different chains and across different bridges to end up uh, with like Y token on the destination chain that they, they want, like with an optimal rate and optimal kind of, uh, you know, uh, pricing. And uh, you also have those cases where, let's say, you know, you have multiple uh, instances of your protocol deployed on multiple different chains. And uh, because these protocols are all decentralized the governance, governance, so like how do you uh, synchronize all the governance decision while your governance token is actually spread across multiple chains, right? So like we can kind of do this uh, uh, kind of a multi-chain voting so that all these, uh, you know, uh, votes can kind of converge together and then propagate the governance decision to all the different blockchains automatically. So it's a kind of a new um, type of governance protocol. There are so many different use cases as well, like cross-chain lending, you know, cross-chain yield uh, farming, cross-chain aggregators, uh, you know, all these things can be built on top of Seller. And what really most uh, excites us most is that there are use cases that we ourselves uh, cannot even uh, think of, but like application developers can start to build. Like, uh, mm-hmm. you know, we already have uh, amazing applications uh, building uh, on top of Seller, like uh, for uh, cross-chain ideal platforms and, and more. So uh, that's definitely kind of uh, uh, where we see the growth is in the future. Uh, mm-hmm. That is to enabling this kind of new interchain native the applications built on top of that. Mm. Incredible, Mo. Thank you for all of that. And you mentioned their cross-chain governance. I think that's really cool. Um, I've seen different protocols messing around with bridging between chains to try and get cheaper governance and, and having that isolated experience. So looking forward to that. And you also mentioned you know, at the beginning about Sushi and, and having DEXs that have multiple pools. Are there already cross-chain DEXs, you know, kind of dApps are built on Seller that we can use? Uh, you know, uh, I think uh, we have a like ecosystem uh, uh, DAX that are uh, releasing very soon called ChainHop. And, uh, you know, they are uh, building this exact functionality and tapping into all the liquidity pools from Sushi, Uniswap, OneInch, uh, you know, Doodle, and all these kind of different DAXs across all the chains. Uh, so that's a very uh, exciting one. Uh, we also have a lot of uh, uh, partners that are building using setters uh, for that direction, but not kind of a, that one click experience yet, like LeFi protocol, uh, Swing, Rango Exchange Mover, and all these others that are building using setter as well today. Uh, so that's that direction. Like, you know, I think everyone see a very clear and strong need in that direction. And everyone is trying to kind of move forward to that. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Interesting. Uh, and there's also, is there also a, a governance token of Seller Network itself in, in how the protocol is governed? Uh, yeah. So the token, uh, the, the seller token itself is not only just a governance token, but like, of course, it has governance functionality. Uh, but as uh, you know, the beating heart of the seller's uh, interchain message framework itself is actually a Cosmos blockchain. Right. So like, you, you know, essentially it's a blockchain on top of all the other blockchains that is connected to, the, to this kind of a central communication layer blockchain. And, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the token itself, first and foremost, is used as a staking token 
for the blockchain itself. So like, you know, it, it, it provides the level of economic security for the cross-chain communication system, just like it provides a, a economic security for, you know, a system that built on top of the Cosmos SDK, like Polygon, mm. uh, or, you know, so many different kind of osmosis and so many different kind of Cosmos ecosystem projects, mm. right? So like that's the, uh, the capability uh, that enabled by the setter. And the, the setter token also directly capture the network value because like, uh, you know, you as a validator and you as a kind of, a, a, you know, a staking uh, nodes is uh, actually kind of helping to secure the network. Just like any uh, proof of stake blockchain, the transaction fee that flows into this cross-chain communication platform will be flow naturally into the stakers proportion to their amount of staking powers. So uh, there's a kind of a, the, 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 the network of security, network value capture, and of course, governance functionality, uh, you know, essentially kind of for the, uh, for the Stellar Network token utility. Incredible. Thank you for that, Mo. Um, and you mentioned their security, you know, governance is important, but security is even more important. And I know we've discussed before about how these bridges can also have vulnerabilities. There's been hacks in the past in, in DeFi. There's been a major one. Can you talk about the security aspect from Seller having that cross-chain interoperability and, and how do you eliminate those risks? Yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, uh, I, I think there are two, uh, you know, I, I think it's a great, a great timing, uh, great timing to talk about the bridge security in general, because in the past, there are so many different bridge hacks. And, uh, you know, just this morning, uh, as we as we speak, like Ronin, which is like the, the Axie Infinity's uh, chain uh, got hacked uh, for about 650 million dollars uh, worth of tokens, which is like probably one of the biggest hack in human history. Wow. Yeah. So uh, you know, for Stellar, we take uh, uh, we 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 take uh, security very very seriously, and we have a kind of a hybrid security model where, by default, uh, the application builders can use uh, the security provided by the uh, Cosmos-based uh, proof of stake consensus, which is already extremely strong and provides a level of uh, uh, economic security that is not available uh, anywhere else, like uh, for the MPC or multi-sig-based model. But on top of that, we also uh, inspired by the optimistic rollup approach to have kind of this optimistic rollup like uh, security model where, where uh, additional delay buffer is added in so that even under the worst case of the entire consensus failure for this cross cosmos chain, the application can still maintain security by cutting off, by having the time, having the delay time to cut off the communication between this kind of a cross chain layer so that it's maintaining uh, full security. So that's kind of on the protocol layer, but on the kind of a practical and the implementation, there are a lot of uh, kind of a security measures are taking in place like continuous monitoring, uh, you know, rate limiting, or, uh, you know, essentially um, a two-phase commit approach for large transactions. And, uh, you know, I would say like a, it's a combination from the protocol design plus the implementation uh, attention to details that combines together uh, should be kind of the best practice for bridging system security. Mm -hmm. Incredible. And I'm guessing you're growing in all of these different ways, but is there anything specific that you're looking for in terms of people that are in the blockchain space that are looking to support Seller Network? Is it just staking, creating more dApps on there, uh, other projects moving their chains over? Yes. Uh, so like, you know, I would say like we are uh, the, the 2021 is the kind of uh, the year of DeFi, right? So like uh, we believe that 2022 and onward is really kind of the year of interchain operability and the interchain DeFi, maybe interchain gamify applications. So, um, you know, on that front, like, uh, you know, we are looking forward to a lot of developers onboarding the seller uh, ecosystem. Uh, to build on top of this uh, kind of uh, uh, platform to enable new kind of applications that is not possible and superior to the existing experiences for this kind of isolated applications, right? So that's the biggest part. And of course, like, uh, you know, uh, all, all, as always, that we want user to help us to secure the network by staking and delegating the uh, seller uh, protocol token uh, to capture the value of the network as well. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And what is the best way for people to just learn more about Seller Network and how they can get involved? 
Yeah, so, uh, you know, our uh, website address is setter.network, uh, C-E-L-E-R uh, dot network. And, uh, you know, uh, we also have like a pretty uh, vivid uh, Twitter community uh, that like uh, users can follow our Twitter for the latest news. And also like uh, we have a very strong Telegram group, uh, telegram group uh, that has a very helpful community to answer any question that one might hide. And, uh, you know, uh, so, yeah, there are various different ways to, um, you know, know, know more about Setter. That's great to hear. And I will leave those links in the description box below. Thank you so much, Mo, for coming on. All the best with everything uh, interoperability moving forward with Seller Network. And let's follow up in the near future. Thank you, Ashley. Great to be here.